So self-care is very important. Any journalist working with traumatic material needs to have a self-care plan and the more traumatic the material, the greater the strains they're under. In terms of online harassment, the bigger the attacks are, then the more they need to concentrate on self-care. It's a kind of basic idea really. But when we're talking about self-care, what we're really talking about is remaining in contact with the things that are good for oneself. Um, so these could be enthusiasms, the pleasures that exist outside of work, uh, friends, um, finding t time and space to do exercise, to eat well, to sleep well, all of these really basic things. So it's not particularly technically complicated. The challenge is not getting so far sucked into the work that one kind of loses sight that one also has a life outside of work. It's probably the, the kind of most fundamental point. There are a few other things as well that can be very useful. Um, particularly if journalists are experiencing harassment or intimidation, it's very useful to have a few kind of psychological kind of resetting tricks, things like grounding techniques, um, not understanding the importance of deep diaphragmatic breathing. So in other words, to have some kind of strategies for dampening down the body's uh, natural stress response when it's under attack. And these are things that it's best to learn before you need them. I suppose it's a bit like um, swimming. You want to learn how to swim before the, before the boat sinks, essentially. So maybe invest in doing a bit of research um, about deep breathing techniques, belly breathing. In the military, they call this tactical breathing. It's a much more macho way of looking at it, but they now train soldiers to do these kinds of things in order to reduce their levels of hyperarousal um, when they're in stressful situations. Some people um, go for mindfulness. They find that very useful. Um, the thing about mindfulness is it can create a bit of distance. So one of the things is that when we become very stressed, we often become quite negative and self-attacking. And so you have this kind of yabba yabba in the back of one's head. I'm no good at this. This isn't working well. I deserve to be criticized, etc., etc., etc. And what mindfulness can do is to bring oneself out of those self-attacking thoughts so that they no longer feel like they're facts. You know, the metaphor that mindfulness practitioners often use is of kind of clouds kind of floating across the sky. So it can help one um, have to develop some, get some space, some extra distance from the material that one is working from. Um, I think that, that one good definition of mindfulness is to say that it's the difference between getting angry and being able to say, ah, oh, that's interesting, I'm getting angry. So it's about being kind of half in and half out of one's emotions. Um, you don't necessarily have to do meditation, um, that's one way, but things like sport can help people kind of reset, you know, go for a run or a walk contact with the natural world, being in nature is really helpful. There's a lot of research evidence to show that um, contact with greenery uh, and water and these kinds of things um, can help um, reset the body's stress response or at least diminish it to an extent. Being in social contact with people who matter to you, um, that's a really important aspect of self-care. Um, and then finding time to enjoy things, finding time to connect to your enthusiasms. Um, the one good thing about enthusiasms is that they can be a little bit obsessive and so that they can help drag the mind out of work. Um, everything from chess to gardening to, I don't know, uh, following a local football club, whatever it is, um, it's a way of stopping thinking about work in, in one's off time. So we all need space to recover, regain our strength. Resilience is, is really a, a bit like a muscle. Okay, so you can think about emotional strength as a, as a muscle. When we're doing physical exercise, like lifting heavy weights, um, we're actually creating kind of little micro tears in, in the muscle. It's only when we rest that the muscle grows strong again. And it's a bit like that with work. In other words, if we don't kind of create space to chill out, remember why we're doing it, um, it can become too much. It's also important to look after, look after one's body. So that's exercise, but also good nutrition, eating properly, sleeping well, 
Um, the Dart Centre, we work a lot with journalists who are working with traumatic imagery. And one of the, 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 the definitely one of the warning signs is when people are getting overly tired. So we become less good at processing distressing material when we're tired and exhausted. So getting proper rest is very important. And also not working with distressing material when you're getting tired. So if you've got some difficult videos to look at or say for example you might have to look at a beheading video or something along those lines, it's best to do that when you're feeling at your most alert rather than at the end of the day just before you're about to go home. Another important aspect of looking after ourselves is keeping hold of the why. So particularly now with the rise of populism and all these attacks that aim to kind of shut journalists down, to destabilize the whole enterprise of journalism, it's important to push back against that negativity and to keep a kind of firm sense of why we do this. And that's something that it's quite hard for us to do individually, I think. It's also it's very much a question of us as a community of people working in, in the media to celebrate what we do and to explain to people why it's important and to keep on pursuing these great stories. I mean, it's a terrible time in many ways that we're going through at the moment, particularly in terms of attacks on the press and in particularly in terms of how insidious those attacks are. But it's also a golden age for reporting, some absolutely fabulous work that's being done out there. And we need to celebrate that and remember the importance of it. People want to silence us because of what we do. 